Hey there, beer tubers. Sorry for the long wait. We're actually starting about six minutes more earlier than we normally do at quarter after nine, even though we start to go off at nine. Yeah, yeah. We're back at you with, of course, Beer Analysis 101 with your host, Macwell Star, and a panel of about uh, three other people here tonight because uh, uh, that's all who are able to get tonight's beer from Jamaica Mon. We are doing a red stripe lager, the cool flavor. 4.7% ABV. Anyway, before we get started, let's introduce everybody that's on the panel. Starting with Mr. A, which is Ashley. The guy with the dude with the woman's name. Come on, be professional. Yeah, you get nothing. You, yeah, get, you, nothing. Today. No. you get nothing? Hi. Nothing. Whatever. How, how are you? Did you yeah, whatever. I'm great. Thanks. Off? See you later. Anyway, hey there, Redbeard. How are you doing tonight? I'm not bad. I'm just going to point out I also have a very, very not so masculine name. So it's okay, Ashley. I love you, buddy. Thanks for having me, Mac. Well, cheers. I suppose I had a manager named Carrie at the place I used to work at. Anyway, I'm not going to go further with that one after the last. Uh... Anyway, another one. Uh, we've also got uh, Greg here, where too, with us tonight. I'm always here, even though you try and get rid of me. I know. Uh, thank you for that beer mail, by the way. You're welcome, Nick. And, uh, did Agnes get the beer too? Or are we introducing her? I noticed you got you're not wearing earphones tonight. Oh, I'm not. My wife's listening, but she's not part of the panel, so she doesn't get an introduction. I'm drinking Perrier. She's drinking Perrier right now. She's a bad person. But uh, and Nick, I need you to hurry up, get the show on the road, because I gotta have my uh, an hour and twenty minutes of nightly sex. That's totally realistic, and I'm not lying about. Uh, so please hurry up, because my wife's gotta go to bed soon. <laughs> Oh my god. God, she's sitting here next to you listening to this crap too. Anyway, uh moving right along with Red Stripe Lager, of course. Uh Red Stripe Oh fuck. Let me try to regain my composure here and read this shit. All right, so Red Stripe traces its origins to the original Galena Brewing Company from Galena, Illinois, a brewery that existed in several forms dating back to around 1833. Over the years, Galena Brewing produced several well-known beers known for their distinctive labeling, such as Blue Stripe, White Stripe, and, of course, Red Stripe. The last iteration of Galena Brewing Company began in 1929 as Prohibition in the U.S. was wrapping up, again producing their popular Stripe-themed lager beers. Within 10 years, however, the brewery ran into financial troubles, and in 1938, the Red Stripe branding was sold to a pair of British investors by the names of Eugene Peter Desnos and Thomas Hargraves Geddes. Desnos and Gettys had formed Desnos and Gettys Limited around 1918 in Kingston, Jamaica, starting first as an importer ship, uh, shipping beers in from abroad, eventually foraying into brewing and building their own brewery in 1927. At the time of the purchase, they were known for their Dragon Stout, which was introduced in 1920 and is still available today. Still brewed today. Desnos and Gettys had produced a pale ale starting in 1928 but the style wasn't quite a hit with local tastes. Following the purchase of uh, from Galena Brewing, Getty's son, Paul H. Gettys, and former brewer and fellow brewer uh, Bill Martindale reworked uh, the pale ale and crafted the recipe into a lager better suited for local tastes. And with their newly acquired branding, launched the now well-known Red Stripe Lager. Red Stripe's breakout success, uh, however, would come from Jamaica's use as an important base of operations for the British Navy during the Second World War. Red Stripe Lager became the local taste of beer amongst many Allied troops stationed there, and after the war, the reputation of Red Stripe began to expand beyond the island. Jamaica gained independence from British rule in 1962, but Red Stripe continued to be a favorite amongst uh, Britain's finest, including uh, fe being featured in many of the books and movies of Ian Fleming's super spy, James Bond, Bond, James Bond, which in turn exposed the brand to a worldwide audience. Red Stripe's iconic stubby bottle was introduced in 1965, and in 1970, uh, D&G, Desnos and Gettys, um, lost, went public, and the beer began being brewed locally in the UK under license from the Charles Wells Brewery. Red Stripe attempted to break into the U.S. market in 1985. However, as the beer was sold in green log neck bottles instead of their classic stubby, sales were kind of flat and eventually ceased in 1989 due to the green color and importation crackdowns on cannabis smuggling into the States. 
Uh, after Desnos and Gettys Limited was bought by Guinness and Smirnoff owner Diageo in 1993, Red Stripe would eventually be reintroduced into the U.S. in cans by Diageo in 2009. First brewed by Moosehead in New Brunswick in Canada. Uh, then in uh, 2012, uh, production later moved to the Latrobe Brewing Co. in Pennsylvania in 2012. Diageo, however, received extreme criticism for the beer being labeled as Jamaican style. Uh, as well as using misleading jamaican themed marketing to make consumers believe that it was still brewed in jamaica going as far as resulting in a class action lawsuit in the state of california in october 2015 uh, controlling 73.3 percent stake was bought uh, by heineken with plans to purchase the remainder at a later date in 19 in 2016 heineken moved production back to jamaica and embarked on a 10-year investment plan dedicated to building Red Stripe into a global brand, including building a 16 million production line, uh, million dollar production line dedicated for export production, which opened in 2017. Heineken also launched a, a new business venture in the U.S. called the Five Points Trading Company to import and distribute Red Stripe beer and other beers into the U.S. market. As of 2017. Red Stripe in the U.S. is once again brewed in Jamaica, as well as Red Stripe for the Canadian, European, and Brazilian markets. Although I'm not sure if that applies to bottled Red Stripe or canned Red Stripe, as it still says Jamaican style. Actually, that line right there, I confirmed that before we went live. Uh, the can version, it's they're both still manufactured by Diageo in the Canadian market, but the can is brewed in La Trobe uh, in, uh, in, in the U.S., uh, in Pennsylvania, and the bottle is actually brewed in Jamaica because the bottles actually say Jamaican brewed. So whoever bought the bottles, you got the good stuff, apparently. Uh, other beers from Desnos and Gettys include, of course, Dragon Stout, Red Stripe Light, Red Stripe uh, Lemon Paradise, Red Stripe Sorrel, which there are those three Red Stripe beers are only available in Jamaica. And uh, Red Stripe is a 4.7% ABV pale adjunct lager brewed with Pilsen malt, hops, and starch made uh, from the cassava plant, a root that's uh, like a root-like vegetable grown in the tropics, similar to a yam or sweet potato, better known as the primary ingredient of tapioca. So we're going to drink a tapioca beer. Oh boy! You're making me horny. I'm making you horny, am I? To make me thirsty, at least. All right. So what do we got for uh, uh, for comments here? Oh, I'm gonna. Uh, Ashley, you want to read some comments? It's taking so long. Hashtag unprofessional. I suppose Ashley's mad at me now, so I better. Mark Gilbert says, still on Twitter. I, I assume he's talking about Nick probably pooping. I assume Nick is pooping as we're broadcasting. That's just what he does. He's a multitasker. On the 10th says, hashtag unprofessional shitter. Then he says, still late. Then he says, is that the real Batman referring to me? I am not the real Batman. I'm similar to Bruce Wayne, except I just don't have his money, but so I don't really have his suit. Um, Gilbert says, Sex Man just mad that it isn't flying monkeys, and he's saying he's already hammered, or maybe he's saying Sexton's already hammered. I don't know. Awesome. Off the tents, hello, other viewers. I didn't get the beer because Red Stripe. Pussy. <laughs> what are you afraid of? A shitty beer? Yeah, really? Currently drinking a Bat 50 because I from a previous beer analysis. Why didn't you put a red stripe label on it and you could have come on the show? We would have believed you. I don't think the flavors are any different. Training on Parade says, yo, Chris. Sexton Brewing says, actually getting quite close. I had to buy a six-pack today, and this is the last one. So you're going to give this a higher mark than you would have six beers ago. Or five beers ago, I suppose. Whatever. Um... Off 10 says, hello, Raining Are You Afraid? What are you drinking? To which he replies, Sierra Nevada Hot Bullet. I've never had that, but it sounds delicious. Hmm. Chris says, good? Or he says, good? Mark? And then he does the hashtag, greatest beer story ever said no one. To which Raining Are You Afraid replies, very nice. 8% double IPA. You know that's a good beer because it's going to get you hammered. Off the says nice, then off the says no pot in that beer. Hashtag stereotyping. Oh, because Jamaican beer you people like to smoke pot. Oh, because like it got pulled from the U.S. because they used to sell it in green bottles and they got 
caught under crackdowns for marijuana smuggling. I guess it was really easy for them to smuggle it in from Jamaica uh, with the green bottles. Oh, bastards. Anyway, that's it for comments. No one else has, no one really has anything interesting to say. That's actually quite a few comments given the um, the point in the episodes that we're only about not even halfway through. No, for but, now, what's next? Maybe Lee will come on, maybe Paul will come on, see something disgusting. Yeah, great. Maybe. Anyway, uh, speaking of some, um, let's go over to Ashley and get what's your uh, what's your history with this beer? I imagine, like, does it go any further than the other five you drank tonight before this one? No, it actually does. Actually, uh, I, I honestly haven't had this in quite some time, but this beer goes back to a time where I worked for a different company and I was traveling all across Ontario. And uh, whenever I went to Ottawa to visit a store we had in Ottawa, I'd always stay in the same restaurant that was attached to an Irish pub. So about once a month, I'd go to this place and uh, stay at this exact same hotel, go to the same Irish pub and um, drink all of their beer. And uh, Red Stripe was one that they actually always had. And I'd never had it before. And I remember trying it. And uh, I, I remember rather enjoying it. Now, this is like 10 years ago. So this is this is like during my like macro swilling days. Well, I'm, I'm still in my macro swilling days. I'm not going to lie. But um, uh, I, I remember trying this for the first time after, you know, just constantly drinking either Carling or Labatt or Canadian or whatever the fuck it was. And actually really enjoying it. Uh, I remember thinking right off, like, immediately upon having this is like wow this is like a sweet beer it actually has a sweet taste to it and uh i always remembered uh that that flavor profile of this beer but no i haven't had it in quite some time so um yeah that's my history with this beer i had it a long time ago and i'm just having it for the first time again so nice there we go first time to well, drink a drink it again in a six pack. Anyway. <laughs> exactly, you got it. <laughs> anyway, all right, Mister Redbeard, what's your uh, what's your history with this beer? This was um, the eleventh beer I ever reviewed on my channel, and back then I was a huge fan of this kind of macro style of beer, so I thought it was great. I was a big fan of it, and I've had it a couple times since. And then the palate shift kind of happened, and now I prefer more craft beer flavors over this kind of stuff but i've had it a few times and uh yeah it's not something i buy these days though really at all but i have six of them now so apparently i'm going to see how drunk six of them make me this evening hmm. well it may not be surround sound from collective arts but you know it's something yeah this this goes down really really easy i'll give it that yeah. So did you get the, I know Ashley, I'm pretty sure Ashley's drinking the bottle. Did you get the bottle as well, Redbeard? Oh yeah, like I said I had to buy a six pack. When I did my, when I did my review, probably about three, maybe four years ago now at this point, I had a can yeah. and there's no cans available in the city anymore. So I don't know if they discontinued them or, yeah, that's where I had, that's where I bought the uh, six pack. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. Greg, yeah. Greg got a bottle of cans somehow. Greg's magical true speaking of magic let's make the magic happen and ask you how magical is your history with red with uh red stripe i guess it's, it's amazing that a little town of toronto might actually have more stock of than you know the giant metropolis that is bay i'm shocked all the time well here's an here's interesting because i just sort of figured out my history i was about to tell you that i have no history with this beer but of course i got to check the untap to be accurate and untap tells me I have had this beer once before. I didn't rate it. I just checked it in on May the 8th, 2017. So I'm like, okay, this strikes me as a beer I'd probably have an event or something. It doesn't strike me as something I'd actually buy. So I'm like, okay, was, was there a wedding on May the 8th, 2017? No, but there was a wedding on May the 6th, 2017. It was actually my own wedding. So <laughs> just at the open bar at my own wedding and I just checked it in two days later because that's about the lag time I have on things. So yes, I apparently had this beer at my own wedding and uh, I don't remember it whatsoever because it was probably one of many, many beers I had that evening. Oh. Do you remember anything from your wedding? Such a romantic story. Except for maybe I'm Carl's sure Agnes name. is proud. <laughs> this may have been the beer that led to the consummation of our marriage. No. <laughs> Nope. 
<laughs> Agnes in the peanut gallery. Nope. <laughs> he knows which beer it was. It wasn't this one, apparently. Red Stripe will definitely not get played after your It might not have been the first one that was drank, but it was probably the first one that came back up. I didn't puke, though. <laughs> All right, so. I want to just point, also say quickly, I haven't had anything else by this brewery. Uh, I've never had Dragon Stout, which is always available at the LCBO, but I just never wanted to buy a six-pack of it because I've heard it's not mm. so great. So I've never even had that before, and I know that's like a... I'll have to try it. If I, if, if I make it up to Ontario this year, I'd like to try the Dragon oh, Stout. But a six-pack, so we're, we're not... Oh, yeah, right. You only get them in sixes there, don't you? i still like to try it. Yeah. Anyway, burpee beer. Going into my little history on this, uh, this uh, beer... I did a review of this uh, back in September of 2011. I think that's the first time I ever had a uh, Red Stripe Lager. Who knows? Maybe I bought it at least once before that. Because, I mean, it's got that cool-ass stubby bottle here that like, it used to be like uh, throughout the 70s, I think, into the early 80s. All beers in Canada came in like these stubby bottles because they were space-saving before they decided to go back to the uh, the, the American-style long neck bottle. Um but uh, anyway, of course, so of course, there's a whole like uh, a whole thought like, oh, man, it's so retro getting something in a stubby bottle. So it's kind of attractive uh, in that sense. But um, as far as the beer goes, I remember I gave it a pass back then and uh, I didn't have another one until um, uh, just last week after Beer Analysis 101. I had it had a bottle on the after show just because I I'd bought two bottles of this and. Um, I don't want to give too much away of my thoughts of it, but uh, I, I did quite acceptably uh, drink the entire thing. All right, so what do we got for uh, for comments since then? You, Ooh, you, you, <laughs> it, you made it seem like you were you were shameful of the fact that you drank the whole bottle last week. <laughs> like, no, uh, I wasn't uh, shameful. I just I don't want to give. I, I drank it. it. <laughs> like, oh. no, I, I made it through. <laughs> So we don't have much comments. Uh, Chris is talking to himself at this point. He says, mm. Sexton's story is better than the beer history. Now, here's the thing, Chris, okay? There was a man, I don't want to use his first name so he can't be identified, so I'm just going to call him by his first initial, Jay Terrio, who ran a shitty beer <laughs> And Nick said, you know what? I don't, actually, sorry, Lee said, you've got a shitty beer show. I'm going to make a better one. And then Nick inherited that label when Lee got bored after like a two or three days. Yeah, because Joe, who doesn't come on this thing anymore, is like th saying that this, oh man, this is a, such a great idea. We should keep, go keep going with this. And I'm like, well, fuck, if Lee's going to stop, I'm going to keep going. So basically the point I'm trying to make, Chris, is it's pretty easy for you to be judging up there in your ivory tower, but Nick works hard <laughs> to, speak to get you these beer histories. And if you don't like it, I suggest you make a beer show that's better than Nick's and then we'll all abandon Nick's show and we'll join your show and then Nick will be sad. <laughs> no, I don't <laughs> join that show. On your show. But you know it's not going to happen because Chris won't put it to create his own show. No. I'm saying that just to see if he'll do it. <laughs> don't do it. He doesn't know how to YouTube. And then he says, mmm, surround sound. Oh, yeah, because we quoted surround sound because that's what Red Beard's not drinking. That was actually quite I, I, tasty. I had one the other night. It was actually quite banging. I saw Sparkle Puff is tastier than that life. Yeah, I, I enjoyed that one as well. That's even so though I, I ate half of it. Good. So. <laughs> <laughs> nom nom nom. You know, a strainer or something. Delicious. All right, all right. So let's get into. We might as well start cracking down in our thoughts. Ashley, what do you think? Sure. Okay. Uh, tasting notes. Here we go. Um, the the aroma is it's it's straight like sweet sweet cream corn, and uh, get a touch of grassiness. Uh, no hot presence whatsoever. It's just like pure malt, pure sugar, pure adjunct. Um, yeah. Uh, other than that, it, it's it's not an offensive aroma, but it is what it is. Um, this the the flavor of it. It, it actually I, I found it has a lot more body to it than most macro lagers. It actually you know coated the palate pretty well. It uh, sort of hung around a little bit in the mouth. It it didn't feel as thin and as watery as as most macro lagers do. Um, so that was a plus. I actually enjoyed that portion. Uh, th the sweetness is still there exactly as I remembered it. It's a very sweet, uh, like sugar forward style lager. Um, 
And it's funny, you were burping. You're saying you have the gassy beer. Holy shit, this is a really gassy beer. I didn't drink any of these out of the bottle. All six of them were poured into a glass to help with the the CO2. But yeah, this is a gassy motherfucking beer. I'm, I'm burping and I'm bloated. But uh, you know what? I mean, it, it went down really easy. It went great with, with, with my tacos I had for dinner. Uh, so <laughs> it, it pairs well with tacos. Um okay. So, I mean, other than that, I mean, it's it's a pretty straightforward uh, macro lager. It's just, a, a, you know, a little bit more on the sweet side of things, and it actually has a, a little bit more body than most. So um, so let's just say from a uh, style perspective, you know, for, you know, a generic macro lager, I'm going to give this an 8 out of 10 for macro lager. I, I think it's a pretty f decent representation of it. It's not offensive. And uh, from a personal standpoint, I mean, I enjoy enjoy it a little bit i mean i i'm not gonna go out of my way to to like fucking buy another six pack of this shit but i mean from a macro logger i could find better i could find a lot worse so i'll give this a six and a half nice there we go all right fair enough all right mr uh rouge beard i actually don't mind it hence my uh second one going right now right number two um yeah it's it's rookie second one jesus <laughs> Sorry, I didn't start until this beer analysis. Try to keep professional here. Um, yeah, it's it's nice. It's got a nice appearance to it. Like even right there, look at my nice big bright fluffy head on there. It's it's a macro logger. Like if you're expecting anything more, then there's something wrong with your brain. But as far as that goes, like I'm echoing Ashley there. Style, I give that an eight, and in personal enjoyment, seven point five. It's I got no problem with that. 7.5 for the style overall? Mm -hmm. No, eight, yeah. Eight, eight, enjoyment. Eight. Enjoyment was 7.5 and the style was 8. Nice. Yeah. All right. Uh, word. All right, Mr. Greg. Well, I'm basically going to just copy everyone, everything else that I'm not going to be a go higher or lower, really. It's basically. I know what Ashley said, it's grass and sweetness and corn. Although I don't, even though the corn taste is there, I find it's diluted and not offensive. Um, you know, for a blonde lager, I mean, I tend not to like blonde lagers, uh, but it, it, it does the job and it's better than a lot of local craft ones I've had. So uh, I guess say 7.5 for style. Uh, for overall enjoyment, it's certainly not something I'd go on my way to buy. But again, it's way better than Molson Canadian. Um, so, six and a half overall. <laughs> well, you see what your rating was again? Uh, it was six and a half overall, and what was the uh, style? 7.5 for style. 7.5, 6.5. All right. So, yeah, I, actually, I'm going to sound a lot like Greg here. Um, don't beat around the bush about this one here. It's just an adjunct logger. It's it's it it it. Uh, it's not like I would call it um, in the world of craft beer a, a stellar beer. But as far as something you want that's inoffensive and easy to drink, pff, this stuff goes down extremely smooth. And uh, argue if you wanted those adjunct flavors like corn or. I'm actually getting like some tastes of like uh, the, the, there is that diluted corn, but I'm getting like almost like, now that I think about like cassava with tapioca, it's almost got that that tapioca pudding, uh, almost slightly marshmallow kind of taste in, in it, along with a little bit of like a lemon tartness kind of uh, 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 to the back uh, to the finish. But other than that, this stuff goes down extremely smooth and extremely easy, and I'm just sucking it right back. But uh, it's not like I'm going to give it a high rating. I'm actually going to match Greg's 7.5 and 6.5 rating for this because I would drink this again. I don't know if I go out of my way to buy a six pack of this again. Thankfully, I can buy this in singles here. I actually thought about maybe buying another, uh, buying a six pack uh, to drink tonight of this stuff to go with the tonight. But it was like 15, 70 or something for, or more or something for six bottles. I'm like, man, I can get craft beer for less than that. So, yeah, I'm just drinking the one. But I got to admit, I am enjoying it. And if I were, like, on a beach in Jamaica or something for vacation, I wouldn't hesitate to drink a bunch of these. 
Right on. So while I do my fancy artwork and MS Paint, I will let uh, Greg continue reading the comments. Okay. It's Greg's night to shine, I guess. Oh boy, here we go. Here's the official announcements. Beer Analysis 201, starting soon. <laughs> oh, Chris. It's on like Donkey Kong. And so it has been said, and so it shall be. It has been written. Sorry, Nick. In on next week's show. I hope you're not doing a really good beer or anything next week. <laughs> we'll see. Uh, and then Eric Gilbert says going down on some tacos. See, he made the obvious oral sex reference because for those of you that don't know, ladies vaginas look like tacos kind of-ish. Sure. Yeah. Fish taco. taco. Mm-mm. And that's why you know when people joke about eating fish tacos, you're like, ha ha ha, because vaginas are going to smell like fish, and then tacos kind of look like vaginas. Kind of a fish taco is like a vagina. Yeah, no, that's not. I feel like Ashley Sexton has never yeah, seen Yeah, you're, you're making everybody feel awkward, Greg. Yeah. But that's what I do. I, that's what I did to my wife on our wedding Holy. night. No, well, apparently. That's how you proposed to her, too. Wow. Well, <laughs> 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 Romantic proposal, Nick. I heard this. I, I heard the story and kind of watched it, the video with the corner of my eye. I actually didn't show the whole screen that time. You did that. Was, I, I, says move on. <laughs> yeah. What's the beer next week? Says Mr. Chris Lezak off the tent, new host of. Beer well, now. you know, technically he's not yet. He's to, to next week on uh, Beer Analysis Two Hundred One. We are going to be looking at bring out your dead. 2018 from Bellwoods. Thank you, Greg, for sending uh, some of these around. Trash beer bottle. Drain drain pour. Pour. I've already had mine. It was gross. <laughs> I'm joking. I haven't had it. I've, I've been sick. Can't yes. be serious. <laughs> hey. Red beer, you need to like not live in like the middle of boonies where it freaking it gets to freaking New Brunswick or it gets to you. What's up with that? I really have no idea. I can't explain it. It makes no sense at all. Is it? Is it? How's the weather up there? Like, is it really snowy? Like, I would imagine it's worse than Toronto. Oh, we've got like a good like four or more feet of snow in some places. It's okay. warm. But because in Toronto, I was supposed to get a package delivered on Monday, and it still hasn't been delivered because it's been delayed by the bad weather. So I'm sort of assuming the Canada Post is even more delayed up in your area. I'm hoping that's what it is, because yeah, like we've, we've it's been snowing off and on nonstop for like the last two days as well. I actually have, went outside today and cleaned off my mom's camper trailer, which was a lot of fun. Have Have you guys bothered to like look at the tracking on the package? We have. Yeah. Oh, okay. It's, it says they're trying to verify the address or something, which makes no sense because I shipped it to my mom's house because her house is way easier to find than where I live kind of thing. Like so, nothing, there's never a problem getting to her place. So I don't know what's going on. So basically if, if you're getting a message like that verifying address, it means it's sitting somewhere waiting for you guys to call for it. Trust me. Think so? Yes. hundred well, percent. Um, if it doesn't get it by tomorrow, I'll call them with the track number. And yeah. I well, you'll say I'll, I, I know where the, uh, like the place where it generally like the <laughs> depot. <laughs> Yeah, the depot where it generally yeah. shows up before it makes it here, or after if it's if I'm not here, that's where I have to go get it. So I'll just stop by there. I'll give them a call tomorrow and I'll check into that. I didn't even think of that. Yeah, I would totally do that. Tracking number and hopefully they have it or something. Oh, just, did I? How was it? Sorry. That was done. I was done. I was done. I was done. I was going to say, is, uh, Greg, did you put uh, my name or Redbeard on the package? I put Redbeard on the package. Okay. Oh. <laughs> Maybe that's why. No, yeah. that shouldn't be a problem either. No, I've never, a problem. I've, many people have shipped me stuff under Redbeard. I've never had a problem with it. And they, oh. had, they, had, uh, they, had, they had no issue with tripod lows. So. No, yes. they didn't. <laughs> that was awesome. I the last thing, you put like <laughs> his name with tripod in the middle. Did you, did you do that with me or just Redbeard? Oh, I put Mr. Redbeard on yours. Okay, <laughs> Mr. Fair Redbeard. Uh, I like that. That's pretty good. I'm wondering if you guys have a package there for Mr. Redbeard. Oh, my God. Mr. Redbeard. How would you claim that? Because you don't have ID. I walk in and I show them that I have a Redbeard. And oh, I if they have a problem with that, 
I yeah. give them one of my, my uh, here's my ID. <laughs> my my right ID, here, bitch. My ID has my wrong address. So that won't do it. Oh, but yeah. I can oh, I can give them my card for my YouTube channel that has red beard, or I can just pull up on my phone my YouTube channel and be like, "This yeah. is what I do. This package is for me." Like, come on now. Okay. It's, it's never been a problem. No, I I can imagine. The beer? Uh, no. No. Uh, it's no, no. Chips. Well, hopefully that. I mean, I, I know it's like a ten percent beer. I just hope it's not sitting outside in a truck, freezing and exploding. I hope. I hope that is. It hasn't been that cold the last couple of days, so. Oh, that's good. That's it good. should be okay, I think. But still, yeah, I wouldn't. I wouldn't want that to happen. That'd be bad. Uh, All right, we ready for the ratings? Yay! Yay! Ratings are. Do -do -do -do. Ratings style 7.75. That's actually pretty high. And overall, 6.75. I think we enjoyed this better than Moose Sense Pale Ale. Yeah. Probably. I, uh, so the water, the water mark on the picture just makes that. Oh, yeah. It totally swiped off the internet. <laughs> that's <right>. glorious. <laughs> nice. Uh, it's kind of got that, that a little bit of that. This beer's kind of got that little bit of that chocolate after chalky aftertaste. You get, like, chocolate? What the chocolate. Hell? No, chalky <laughs> aftertaste you get like from eating like um, uh, rockets, beer. you know, the little candies. Or, why are or, a bunch of things on the bottom of your taskbar flashing? I was wondering the same thing. I really don't know why it's flashing because it's not flashing on screen. Jesus. Weird. Anyway, I'm going to stop sharing now because everybody's peering at my over, desktop. Man. All right. So my total class act here of, uh, you know, showing the uh, uh, MS Paint. <laughs> well, All right. So Chris, Chris is excited it. about uh, bringing out. Yeah. He's like, whoop, did whoop. he get one? Whoop, whoop. Chris get one? Chris uh, yes, he did. Yeah, okay, Chris. Cool. Yeah. He won't watch next week. So I trust he'll actually get that. He actually has next week's beer, so he'll show up next week. I, I hand-delivered it, like, with my bare hands. I placed it into his hands. He has it. You hand-delivered it with your bare hands. With oh. my bare hands. <laughs> Redbeard always has to whip out the penis. Yeah. It's all about timing, baby. Anyway, I think that's that means that we're drawing to a close here. So we already know what next week's beer is. He's uh, Eric Gilbert's like shit age or bring out your dead first. We've already announced it, so might as well fucking drink it. I think Greg's got like 60 bottles of it aging anyway. <laughs> of which, uh, bring out your dead? Yeah. No, not quite. I've got, I think I have like 10 left right now. Like that. Holy fuck. I spent, I spent a lot of money on beer. It's still, like if I had the money to buy that many, I would buy that many. That beer was really good. Well, you, fair, I, flashing your penis or uh, red beard? My you know whole, what? My whole shit time bring her dead, a whole shit time double tempest. Those are the years I spend a lot of money on. That and Licking Hole Creek, which I seem to have bought all this. All yeah, this. man, you're like the yeah, you, number one fan. You're such yeah. a homer for that beer. Well, geez, the Licking Hole Creek is a huge, like, a hell of a deal. If there was a 370 a can. Yeah, I bought like 50 cans of it so far. Holy fuck. Watch it like not age well. It, you know what? It, Adjuncts are starting to fade, but it's still it's still eleven point something percent, so it's fine. It'll get you drunk. You'll be fighting people in no time. Fuck, I'm gonna have one of those in the after chat. All right, right, right. Anyway, before we uh, before we go completely off the rails, let's go offline and then come back online and then go off the rails. Yeah. Yay! All right. Uh, so, thank everybody for watching. Uh, thanks, uh, Ashley. Uh, Redbeard and uh, Greg, of course, for coming on. And thank you, everybody, for popping in the chat. And wow, we had nine people at the end of this thing. Yay! We're signing off. We'll see you in a few minutes. And Redbeard. Penis. Penis. Hey!